What up team? Here you are live with Big Boys Boxing once again. So, give me a sec here. I'll just check a few things. Make sure our audio is all good. Here we are. Where's the audio check? Here we go. Sick here. Just, yep, audio is all good. So, bit to talk about today, but as per usual, I'm going to continue my promotion of New Zealand music artists, and we're going to warm it up today with a song by a band called Breaks Co-op, and the song is called The Other Side, so check it out. have it that was breaks co-op with the song called the other side another fantastic kiwi artist it's available on itunes it's available everywhere you can buy music so get in there if you enjoyed it and enjoy it <laughs> simple as that so <clears throat> over the weekend we had a couple of the kiwi boys having a bit of a bit of a <laughs> Uh, how would I put it? A run out. I'll put it that way. 
And Brother L Dog was there on my first attempt at commentary. Wasn't the best, but you know, got to start somewhere. So, what's up, L Dog? Good to have you in. <clears throat> Lost one also in here. Good to have you in. So, Junior Far versus Devin Vargas and. Hemi the Heat Ahio versus Joshua Tufty. I mean, Joshua Tufty was a terrible opponent for Hemi Ahio. He's shorter than Hemi, and Hemi's only six foot. He's a big fat blob, but credit to the dude, he did try to fight back. His way of not getting hit was trying to throw punches back. So he did try. And at the start of the commentary, I said, everybody quickly, give us your pick. I said, oh, round two. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll go round three stoppage. But you know, it'll be round two now that I've changed my mind. And sure enough, it was round two. But Hemi knocked Tufty down once in the first, twice in the third, and then the ref caught it off. Wasn't competitive. So Hemi moves on. I think it's 16 and 0 now, but... He needs to get some better opponents. Uh, I'm not sure whether Mark Cadell has got a hand in managing him at the moment. Um, he is Junior Farr's manager. And um, he trains in the same gym as Junior, Junior Farr at CKB in the central city of Auckland. Uh, it's the same gym where Israel Adesanya trains. Um, what's his name? Uh, the guy Hooker as well, and uh, Nick Jones, all UFC fighters fight out of that gym. So there's no lack of quality in there, but there's something going on with Junior. I mean, Junior went the distance 10 rounds with Devin Vargas. And despite the scores being pretty wide, Vargas got knocked down twice. And for me, he only won one round in the fight, being round four. Um, there was a couple of closer rounds there, but I thought Junior should get this guy out of there, and he didn't. So it's kind of putting more confirmation on the fact that Junior just doesn't seem to have the right stuff to kick it at elite level. I mean, the hopes were there. He's got the size, he's got the speed, he's got the skill, but he just can't seem to put it all together. Um, man, I think Hemi Ahio is a much more exciting fighter to watch. Um, being only six foot, I don't think he's going to be a world beater, but he could give some heavyweights a really good fight, man. He can take a shot. He's got plenty of power, plenty of speed, and balls of steel. So, I think Hemi's a better attraction than Junior Far. But, uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe Lou DeBella is going to decide to take on Hemi as a potential uh, entertainment fighter. Um, I would like to see it. But as for Junior, I think he's going to have to start facing some better opponents to try and bring his game up. I would really like him to face Jermaine Franklin. Um, as it stands for me, there's two, they're the two guys who are underperforming, but they're still unbeaten. So if we put them both in the ring together, one of them's going to take a loss and one of them's going to move on. And it's going to be a matter of who's going to step up their game because both of them have been having issues in their last few fights. Excuse me. <clears throat> but um, I've got actually I was reading some articles after the fight and I saw a few commenters on boxing scene talking about um, who is Hemi a heel I've never heard of this dude and if you're not from New Zealand well it's quite likely that you haven't but I'm just going to show you all a quick video here involving Malik Scott 
this is on Junior Far's Facebook page here. So we'll just have a quick listen to what he had to say here. What's up, people? I just got finished doing 12 hard rounds with two of the toughest guys in the world right now. Young Henry, one of the hardest punches I've ever been in the ring with. I got a, uh, uh, the first day I got here off the plane, I boxed this guy. I did not know he, I knew he was an explosive fighter, but he punches extremely hard. And uh, everybody look out for him. Y'all already know Junior Five. Junior Five, undefeated. <laughs> he won all the smoke. Oh, snap! Ohio, y'all wanted it? Y'all got it! So there you go. A few kind words from Malik Scott, but he did speak about how hard Junior Fire hits. So, oh, sorry, he talked about how hard Hemi Ahio hits, and I'm inclined to believe it. Um, there's one fight that I remember watching Hemi uh, fight, and it was against. Uh, local boy Daniel Ty. He used to be a kickboxer. He's hard as nails. But. Um, that fight went the distance. And I don't think it should have. But. Why it went the distance. Is Hemi's shoes. In the ring were slipping. Every time he tried to sit down on a punch. His back foot would slide out. So he's just out falling over. Every time he tried to throw a power punch. Um. But, yeah, as an entertainment value fighter, Hemi Ahio, it's just a beast. I just want to see more of him at, at a better level. So, I'm going to send some links out for anybody who might like to join. So, just give me a minute here, I'll get it sorted. Uh, and I'll also drop a link in the chat in a minute. And we can talk some boxing. It is fight week for Los Ortiz versus Deontay Wilder as well. So that's coming up on the weekend. So there's a bit to talk about there. Um, I've just seen a couple of articles from a couple uh, from both guys in boxing scene. A little bit to talk about there, but there is a link for anybody else who might like to join the chat get some sounds going in the background here that's a way um so yeah i guess uh my conclusion is junior far i don't think he's got the stuff to kick it at top level i think he's maybe top 50 but uh, i wouldn't go trying to place him anywhere inside the top 30 at the moment um, it's just how it is. Yeah, he did beat Joseph Parker twice in the amateurs, and that's what he's kind of been living off. Uh, they had four fights in the amateurs. That was two for two. But uh, don't forget, Joseph Parker turned pro at 19. So when Junior fought him, he's three years older. Joe would have been a hell of a lot less experienced. And I don't think Junior puts enough on his jab to keep somebody like Parker up at bay these days I think Joe's got a lot more skilled um, experience at a high level definitely helps as well and I think Junior's got confidence issues compared to Parker I mean Parker could you be a bit more aggressive at times but Junior could be a bit more aggressive almost all the time except for when he's going balls to the wall like he did against Frank Le uh, Fred Latham he got him out of there real quick but, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, like I said, anybody who wants to join is quite welcome to. The link is in the chat there. Uh, still trying to get a few things sorted here. Sorry, peeps. That was a mean fight, the far one. I think you mean the, um... The Fred Latham one. Yeah, I was expecting that one to go a bit further because at the time Fred Latham was unbeaten. He'd fought a couple of semi half level um, domestic guys, but he got overwhelmed, got caught, and uh, yeah, he looked pretty ill in the corner. 
still trying to block punches when the referee had already stopped the fight. <laughs> he didn't know where the hell he was. It's amazing he stayed on his feet. I think Frank Warren will try to get Junior to fight Daniel Dubois. Yeah, I can imagine that's a possibility, but we'll see what happens after Dubois uh, fights Fujimoto because he's going to shoot right up the rankings with the WBC and the WBO once he gets that win under his belt, which he will. Um, wow. Well. Got someone in the chat. Is that you, Muller? It's not. Oh uh, yeah, how's it going, mate? Not too bad. It's not showing up properly in the corner for some reason. Not sure what that's about. Yeah. Who cares? We got you now, brother. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> you you caught the two fights on the weekend? Yeah, yeah. I like the the uh, Hemi one. What's his last name? Ahio. Yeah, yeah. I like. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, he, he's a good hard puncher. He's he's accurate. You know, you, you would have thought maybe six months ago that he was too small for the for the current heavyweight fight game, but you know, Ruiz did okay. Yeah, and he's he's yeah. not, not much shorter than Ruiz. He's only yeah. an inch inch and a half shorter. Yeah, um, so good accurate punches, nice and hard, fast. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I would actually I actually think he's got more prospects than Far. Yeah, well. Uh, I know the fight had never happened, but if you put Junior Far and Hemi Ahio uh, in the ring to fight each oh, other, yeah, I think Hemi would absolutely beast Junior. <laughs> oh, I think so. I, I have to be honest. Like I, I look at um, Junior Far, and I just he doesn't excel at anything. Like he's got, he doesn't have a great right hand. He doesn't have a good left hook. He doesn't use the jab exceptionally well. He doesn't look exceptionally powerful he doesn't look exceptionally quick he doesn't throw particularly good combinations he only throws one two so his punches aren't particularly accurate i i really wasn't impressed with what i saw from him and i think he i think i think he'll get himself a decent payday against he's ranked seventh with the wbo apparently so i think at some point he'll be thrown in against a decent fighter and he'll get a okay payday but i think he'll get a hiding yeah yeah I and that and that so and that'll be it yeah, I, th I think he's even regressed. I mean, I went back and watched the fight. Uh, I think it was a world boxing, uh, world series of boxing fight where he fought um, Aslan Bek Makhmadov, and he beat him. He looked pretty good. You know, his feet seemed to move faster. He seemed to have straighter, more accurate punches, and uh, I don't know what's happened. Yeah, yeah, and um, and as uh, um, as L Dog commented, uh, um, Far's defense is crap. He's easy to hit. That's regression too, because he used to be very defensively sound. So. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I was I was really disappointed with what I saw, man. You know, yeah. like his stamina was okay. He went he went the rounds, not a problem, which is good. But skill wise, yeah, he he's made no progression. And no. I think one of the things that have possibly contributed to him making no progression is that he's fought nobody he hasn't had to progress yeah well, you know it's a bit of a worry since he's been with lou de bella not much has happened you know he no. had the, got that fred latham fight which was okay okay but then he went backwards he fought newfell Oata. it's like <laughs> that did yeah, come it's, on <laughs> and how many fights has he had now must be must be getting close to 20. It must be 20 something must be about 20 you know We'll look yeah, that up, actually. Uh, yeah, man. It's it's really. I was really disappointed in what I saw, man. I really was. Uh, you know, it seems I wanted to be to... a common theme. Eh? Every every fight we're seeing lately seems to be worse and worse, or the performance seems to be worse and worse from home. So, yeah, nineteen and 0. 19 and zero now. There nineteen and zero. You know, and he's only got ten KOs. He <clears throat> he doesn't have a. He he's he's just not going to do it. He's just not, I just, yeah, he's not going to do it, mate. I think his best chance is to try and go balls to the wall with everybody. I, mean, I got, would, yeah. yeah, he's a big guy, he's a big guy. And that's one criticism I've always had of him is that he doesn't know how to impose himself. It's like, you're a big guy, man. You should be controlling the center of the ring and looking to put it on these guys. Yeah. You know, you know bring, bring some aggression, man. And he, and he doesn't seem he doesn't seem to do that. Yeah, well, 
his trainer that he's got at the moment, Doug Vicious Viney, has got that tag for a reason. And, you know, I thought it might have been a good step because the first fight he was under Doug was that Fred Latham fight. And I thought, shit, here we go. We've got some aggression finally. Who's next? And then the, the level of opposition drops and then the performance level drops and, you know, any thoughts of Junior Farr being able to possibly get a world title if he timed it right, I think it's just about gone out the window now. Yeah, like he'll get a top 10 fight because he's ranked seventh with the WBO. He will score himself a top 10 fight and he might make 500 grand, 500 grand to a million depending on who the opponent is. So he'll get an okay payday, but I just think he'll get a hide and, and then that'll be it. See you later. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, people have talked about um, Parker and Junior having a fight. Why haven't they fought? You know, I've heard Kevin Barry talk about it, and uh, apparently, like three, four fights ago, Junior Farr was asking for a million dollars. Yeah, I heard I heard he was asking for it. Yeah, bullshit, eh, mate? Uh, he, he's just... Why bother asking? <laughs> if you're asking for a million dollars yeah. and you fought nobody. And why, and why would, if Parker was going to fight far, he might as well fight Dominic Brazil or, or Joe Joyce or somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's got, no, he's got nothing to gain from fighting Junior Far. No. He's going to get no he's going to get no props for it from the international boxing community. Yeah. It just, yeah, it's just pointless, mate. Point, totally pointless fight. As much as it's a local derby, it's got, it, it's not going to help Parker at all. No. You know, I'm, yeah. So no, I, that's, yeah, Junior Far was dreaming on that one. Yeah. Yes. Um, hey, I've just brought Junior Farr up on Box Rick and it says he's four wins, four losses. What the hell? Oh, no, that'll be. Hang on. Have I got, got it up here? picture and everything on there. Junior. Uh, oh, no, it's got 19. 19. I've got 19 with wins, 10 KOs, no losses. Uh, Are you looking at his amateur record there, must, John? Yeah, it was. It showed. Yeah. Oh, World Series of Boxing, it's got up there. I didn't realize that. Okay. Usually it goes straight to his normal profile. But uh, welcome, Unrivaled. How are you today, brother? How's it going, man? Yeah, I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Awesome. I'm just watching The Strongest Man in History or some something on the History Channel. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of exciting boxing to review for over the weekend? <laughs> Not really, no. Um, Not really. Did you see the junior fight and the Hemi fight? No. No? I haven't actually seen them. Okay. No. I haven't seen them yet. I was planning on doing it tonight before, to help me go to sleep. I'd watch Hemi first and then watch Junior Fa. Because Hemi, he looks like me. Is Junior still doing the same old stuff? Same old shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> he won by a wide margin, but it was a lot more competitive than the scorecards suggest. So he should have put Devin Vargas away. In three rounds, he oh, looked he's like he was. Devin Vargas. Yeah. He went the distance with Devin Vargas. What round was that? Was it a ten rounder, an eight rounder? Ten rounder. He knocked him down twice, but couldn't finish him off. Once in the earlier rounds and once in the mid rounds, I think it was. But um, yeah, another lackluster performance. <laughs> so, but Hemi was good. Poor mate. Poor. Hemi needs a. Need some better opponents. You sound a bit quiet today, mate. A bit far from your mic. Am I still sounding quiet? That's better. Now we can hear ya. Alright. Cool, lads. Um, yeah, so it's fight week for Ortiz versus Wilder. And Lewis Ortiz looks like he's in pretty damn good shape. For a man who's only a year younger than me, um, he's well, apparently a year younger than me. At a minimum. At a minimum. At a minimum. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just put this picture on screen for the viewers. Here's a picture of Lewis Ortiz, how he looks at the moment. He's looking pretty trim, man. That's it. He looks fat. He looks fat to me. He looks trim across the arms. Yeah. But look at his stomach. Look at it. You can see that it's sucked in. You can see the fat around it. There's no visible abdomen. Yeah. He's fat. That's <laughs> a good angle for that picture. 
but wait till the weigh in. People are going to be like, what happened in the last few days? He looks heavy to me, man. Yeah. I wonder how much he's going to weigh. Probably yeah. 240 ish, you reckon? Yeah. I'm looking forward to the fight. I paid to watch it. It's a heavyweight fight. I'm hanging out. I was hanging out for a heavyweight fight, so I paid the thirty four ninety five to see it. Hopefully it'll, you know, be a decent go six rounds or something. I'll be happy. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the fight, but um I won't be paying for that one. It's I'm not paying for something that I've already seen and I pretty much know the outcome, I think. I've got uh Deontay Wilder to stop Lewis Ortiz in round four. But yeah, um, yeah he's gonna he's gonna get him uh get him uh yeah I think he'll get him within six anyway. Easy get him easier than the first time because he's gonna he's gonna know what he's what he's coming up against. So Yeah, I agree. Um but definitely I'll I'll definitely watch it. Uh I hope it does well for the two guys because, um, you know, Luis Ortiz needs the money, as he hasn't earned a lot in his career so far. Um, and for Wilder's profile, I hope they do well. But um... Yeah, well, I can get this out of the way. I mean, as I say, I enjoyed the first fight. You know, it took a while to get going because they were both undefeated and they both respected each other. But once that fifth round, once they got going and the fight took off, so, you know, this, this fight, I think Wilder should do it easier, but it will just be... Imagine if uh, Ortiz did land the punch, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Man. You know, imagine imagine if he did, man. It just, yeah. I, I wouldn't be, a... be absolutely shocked if Ortiz won because he's certainly capable of it. But um, I, I just don't see it. You know, he's he's a year and a bit older than last time they fought. Yeah, yeah, um, man. He's... And, Look, I don't think it's going to happen. A bit slower. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. You know, I'm picking him a wilder within six. But, you know, it's, it's boxing. It's heavyweight boxing. So it's sort of, the, it gives you a bit of interest. There's always a possibility. So, but I haven't, I haven't watched a heavyweight, fight, good, you know, a big fight for a bit. So that, that's why I paid for it. I just thought, oh, I want to watch something. So, yeah. Yeah, I've got the card up now and I'm just trying to look for something else that's a decent weight on there. But there's heaps of super featherweight fights. There's lightweights. Super light. Uh, it's not even any light heavies or anything up there. Oh, jeez. Super Bantam. Far out. There's a lot of fights on here, but I think some of it's not televised too. I saw the article yesterday. Oh, there's a cruiserweight fight. Who's, oh, Marcellus Wilder is on the card. Um, and he's going to be fighting Dustin Long. Who's two and one and two? Who the fuck is Dustin Long? An absolute scrub. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> um, Super Bantam. Well, oh, there's a welterweight fight. Uh, names I don't know. Man, this is a big event. But yeah. <laughs> The best, the best fight based on like name recognition after like the Wilder fight on that card is Lewis Neary versus Emmanuel Rodriguez. Yeah, the co, oh, the chief support event there, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a, that's an interesting fight. Rodriguez, former world champion, lost to Inoue in like a round, two rounds, on the Taylor Baranchik on the card in the War Boxing Super Series, um, Lewis Neary. Fast track bully. I'm, I'm interested in the fight, but like to be honest, I think Neri beats him kind of comfortably. I don't rate Rodriguez as highly as some people do. Yeah, yeah, he's only got the one loss, eh, Rodriguez? But, uh... Yeah, to a new way. Yeah. So, yeah, has he faced anybody else of note? Um, to Paul get... Butler. <laughs> That's his best win, a British level guy. Okay. Yeah, well, there's no no win really in between Inoue and Butler, so it's hard to get a good gauge on the guy. But um, we'll see. Could make it interesting. Um, God, the Ruiz the Ruiz fight, man, is not even three weeks away. Jeez, I looked at the calendar this morning. I damn sneaking up, isn't it? Yeah, man. 
My little boy told me today, uh, oh, there's only four weeks left of school. I was like, oh, shit, where's the year gone, man? <laughs> yeah, oh, no, eh? God, it's, it's been so quick. Yeah, but um, it's creeping up, all right, that Joshua yeah. Ruiz. Um, I did see an article about Wilder talking about how he liked Ruiz in the first fight and he likes him in the second fight. So I don't know whether that means in um, proper English whether... Wilder was actually picking Ruiz in the first fight. Fight, or, yeah. You know, hard to you know, I was think I was thinking yesterday. <laughs> I had a thought about Wilder, and he turned down that big offer with Dan's. I think it was for like a hundred, a hundred twenty million, whatever it was. And some the Wilder fans are saying what a great move it was because he can make more money and all this. And it, for one thing, I thought, well, hundred million dollars for three fights. Who else could he fight? to make $100 million in three fights. I can't see it. He's not going to make that kind of money f- having three fights against Ruiz or or Tears or even Fury. So I, I, I've never seen it as a good move financially. He's going to have to have more fights to make the $100 million. He's going to have to basically fight harder and, and for longer to make the same amount of money. So I don't see how that can be smart. Mm. But the, well, spanner, the, spanner can... the, the spanner in the works... Oh, the spanner in the works for Wilder would be... If he um, imagine if Ruiz, imagine if Ruiz beat AJ in the rematch, and then Ruiz fought Wilder, and Ruiz beat Wilder and took his belt. I mean, what a disaster for Wilder, man! Because he's not going to be able to fight an undefeated AJ. You know that's gone forever, and and having lost to Ruiz, he's lost his belt. I mean, his his stocks will plummet to such a degree it'll just be a, he'll be crying that he didn't sign for that 100 mil he's yep. taken a huge risk with it eh I can see your point um, you are going to say something there unrivaled well the 100 million thing never mattered the second AJ like lost to Ruiz because when they offered that 100 million contract to Wilder Ruiz and AJ, uh, Ruiz, uh, AJ and Miller was already signed. So he was already having that fight. And then after that, it would be Wilder. But because AJ ended up losing to Ruiz, that was already gone. That 100 million was gone because it was a two fight with AJ on the contract. So 40, 40 plus 20. That's what it was. It was 20 for Brazil, 40, 40 for AJ. But... AJ ended up losing, so they can't give him that AJ guarantee because AJ's just lost, and that forty million's at the window for each fight. But if 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 he was fighting, if he had fought, um, if if AJ had fought Miller instead of Rui- of Ruiz, and then the, probably the fight with Ruiz would never have happened. They they would have gone on to the Wilder fights, wouldn't they? They would have, but in essence, that doesn't matter because when Miller failed the drug test the only other person who he could fight was Was Ruiz Ruiz. yeah 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 well that's an interesting point I wonder if if in the contract Mm. uh, that was offered if AJ had have lost prior to Wilder fighting him would AJ uh, would Wilder still have been contractually obligated to fight on the zone possibly Mm. possibly not but we'll never know yeah at, we'll never the, know. at the time, you know, it's hard to believe that uh, Wilder couldn't didn't take it. You know, I think there was three offers there. Eh? There was an eighty million for two fights, a uh, hundred for three fights, and hundred one twenty for four. four. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, if he didn't want to be tied down at the time, for me, he could have taken the eighty million and stepped straight in the ring with AJ. And yeah, and even even three fight deal you could you could do in a year, you know you got the fight with Brazil is really nothing. That's easy. That's easy work. And then you just got the two AJ fights. Forty million a pop. Yeah, what? man. I mean, it, so I mean, it's just it's just so risky for him now. I mean, just imagine if he if he Ruiz beat AJ and then Wilder fought Ruiz and lost. It was like, oh my god, man. It is it, a it, new you know, Mexican but, god if that happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You're going to say something there, um, unrivaled? Yeah. Just imagine something even worse. Imagine he gets knocked out flat, like, unconscious from a one punch from Ortiz. That's it. 
Yeah. It could happen, man. This is heavyweight boxing. Yeah. Shit. Um, yeah, and Luis Ortiz, look, never mind that heavy. On top of that, he is a good fighter and he packs a punch. Like, I don't give him a hope, really. But I give him a heavyweight hope and a good heavyweight at that hope. Yeah. So, he's he's capable of knocking out. Well, there he hits hard enough, doesn't he? I think so. It's the question is, can he? Well, that's like, get yeah. To... Yeah. It was like, it was like, I mean, that first fight that Ortiz had with Wilder. I mean, he Wilder got saved by the bell. I mean, I mean, he was wrong. the doctor. Man. Yeah, I, I, I thought he was so, gone. While I thought God, he was in so much trouble. He was so lucky, man, that, that the ref stepped in, you know, and when the bell rolled, the bell rung basically and got him off the hook and. So yeah, you just you just never know, eh? It's that's probably why I paid to watch the fight. Just that faint that faint possibility that Ortiz might pull the upset. Well, I don't think there's any valid argument from a fan um, that watches Deontay Wilder fights. They can't argue that he's not exciting to watch because you know he can be vulnerable. So um, you know anything can happen, but he's also one well if not the biggest puncher in the heavyweight division at the moment so he's either getting knocked out or he's knocking someone out 99 yeah. percent of the time and that's yeah, what man. that's what fans want to see so the potential for him to make a lot of money is certainly there but he's getting longer longer in the tooth now he reckons he's got six years left which would put him at 40 years old i can't see him even going that far um, no, with no how his hands are a bit brittle and how hard he hits and and the thing, the thing with Wilder, like he, people say, like he's got technical floor, but he's got an incredibly powerful punch and he's fast. But he needs to hold on to that stuff, and, and as time goes on, it, it becomes increasingly difficult to hold on to it. So I sort of feel like the next two years, you know, th- when, when most fighters, when when you look at what was Muhammad Ali doing at thirty six, Larry Holmes, Joe Lewis, what were they doing at 36? What was Holyfield doing at 36? Most fighters, there's exceptions to the rule always, but most fighters are even at 36 are sliding. Yeah, the slow, so, the speed starting to disappear. Yeah. The reactions are getting slower. Um, you know, yeah. those are the first things to go. The power is the last to go. So um, if you rely on power, you've probably got a better chance of having a longer career. But if your defense isn't that great, and your reflexes are slowing down, then you're also getting more vulnerable as well. You start getting hit, eh, man? Those, those punches you used to avoid, they start landing, yeah. So I think the next couple of years for him are so it's so important. He needs to get moving. And some of the old DBC guys, they were talking, oh, he's the greatest fighter of this era. And I said to them, well, look, I'll give him props for fighting Ortiz and Fury. You know, good on him for that. But he needs... The fight, the fight that ended with Fury and a bit of controversy. People were, were debating the decision, so he really needs to fight Fury again and knock him out. Then he needs to beat AJ and he needs to beat Ortiz, uh, Ruiz. And if he could clear, if he could clean that up, he could say he was the best heavyweight of this era. Didn't but um, you know, he's got some work. Or to even do. then, even then, Mala, even then, if AJ were to lose to Ruiz and he were to beat Fury and then he were to beat Ruiz. If he were to be even a Dillian White or something, or even a Pavekin or something like that, he would have a really good names under his belt to where he could say he had the best resume. Yeah, he could, eh? He could, man. Yeah, well, he's not that far away from having one of the better resumes. You know, if, if he fights the top guys one after the other for three or four fights. Yes. Oh, that's right, man. That's right. All it is, of this next two years, he's got Ortiz and Fury on his belt, and it was good on him. If he could have another just a, a big two years and fight, you know, two or three times a year for the next two years and line those big names up, absolutely, man. His record would would you'd finish with a good with with a good resume. Absolutely, eh? Yes. And he could say and yeah. if he won all those fights, he could say he was the best of the era. Yeah, no doubt. Well he 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 could because he's got look, after this fight I'm expecting him to have two wins over Ortiz, right? So let's say he'd be Fury, he'd have a draw and a win over Tyson Fury. So that's like Canelo over Golovkin. That's pretty decent. Yep. Then if he were to fight Andy Ruiz, get a victory there. Or Joshua, whoever the champion is. And then maybe Dillian White or Pavekin or someone. Or Parker even. You'd be looking at that resume and going, Ortiz twice, Fury once and a draw. AJ or Ruiz, whoever it is, and Dillian White 
You'd be looking at that resume, Colm. Yeah. Damn. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's good, eh? There were a lot of the hate that he cops about fighting 32 fights before he actually fought somebody alive with a pulse. You, that would disappear. There'd be a whole, would, man. whole lot more people getting in behind Wilder rather than saying, we want to see him fight the best, and he hasn't yet. So, yeah, yeah, man. Um, I hope he can do it, but um, let's hope this PBC belt that they're talking about oh, no. isn't going to cause some trouble. I really yeah. hope this don't start with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to be tra- well, you know, You know what? The worst thing will be if they get a, a Dan's belt. <laughs> you know, you have boxing split in half. You'll have the guys signed with Dan's. You have the guys signed with PBC. They won't fight each other. You know, uh, the big uh, uh, just a disaster, right, man? Yeah, I was actually watching Boxing Library. It already is a disaster. Well, it is. Yeah, it is a disaster already. If, but it'd be an even even greater disaster <laughs> if that's possible. But yeah, I can't see it working. But um, you know, if they do try it, then I think they've got to make a clean break with everything. The, any anybody who fights on this PBC platform shouldn't be fighting anywhere else shouldn't fight fighters from other governing bodies because that's what it is a governing body and the pbc shouldn't recognize any other bodies so it could take over and end up like the ufc one belt one face one name nothing else matters but i can't see it happening there's too much history behind the wba and the ibf in particular people aren't going to let those ones go uh, sorry, the WBC and the WBA, um, the two oldest belts. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna forget. There's about a lot it. of history behind that WBA belt as well. Yeah. It's the original, a eh? original belt, WBA, I think. Well, that goes back to the NBA, like, and even then, people were like, "Well, the WBC is older than the WBA." They're wrong because the WBA's name change was in 62 and uh, WBC wasn't officially founded until 63 yeah, so yeah. even then the WBA is older than the WBC yeah and then the IBF was, was 83 or something eh? 83 that's correct my yeah. yeah yeah the WBO wasn't until uh give us a year there on rival well uh, being recognized I think it's all five but like being yeah. officially recognized but there's so many variant sources on that I mean, it was around in like the late eighties and the nineties, like with Tommy Hearns and stuff. Yeah. So, but it wasn't officially recognised until the early two thousands. But that was officially recognised by all of them on it. They sort of drip fed yes. from like ninety nine through to two thousand and five, where they started. Yes. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It's a murky area. It's a murky area because some weight divisions it was recognised. Like yeah. in the lower weight divisions, it was recognized in 01. So it's kind of a murky area in terms of officially recognized. So I just go with 05 when all weight divisions recognized and all the sanctioning bodies do. Yeah. All right. Um, and I think it's the week after that, uh, after the Ortiz versus um, Wilder fight, we've got the. Uh, Zhili Zhang versus Sergey Kuzmin for this one I wouldn't mind talking about it but I think it's very competitive um, and I've really been waiting for Zhili Zhang to step up and he's finally doing it so um, Sergey Kuzmin I want to check that yeah he, he recently, I like that for you yeah give us a rundown how you think it's gonna go unrivaled I don't know because it depends. Kuzman, he's very sporadic with his weight. And yes. that's a very, very big flaw with him. We, we've seen him come in at 240 and 270. Like when he fought Pricey, he was about 251 or something or 241. I can't remember what it was. And he looked pretty good. But he came in quite overweight over against the, with the fight with Hunter. Thank you, by the way, for, for helping me out with being able to see that. Um he looked quite slow and ponderous if he's that slow against Zhang who's able to keep his length and his jab going I think Zhang could run away with it just by one-twoing him all night but if Cousin comes in a bit leaner and tries to get in on the inside and force the pressure and keep the pressure up I think he'll probably stop Zhang to the body in the mid or mid to late rounds but that's an interesting fight 
And I think a lot of it comes down to Kuzman's game plan and his shape because if he can't get inside, I don't think he can win. I don't think he can box with him from range. Yeah, we'll see. I think that's going to be the biggest part of Zhang's plan is keep it long. Um, He's got a very short reach, Kuzman, eh? He's 75 and a half. Um, yeah. For, well, it's, for a guy six foot four, gee, he's, yeah, he's got a um, lot of heavyweights reach. But um, how much Zhang's? I think it's like eighty-one or something like that. Yeah. Uh, have you seen much of Zhili Zhang, uh, Mala? No, no. Man, there's a few fights of his on YouTube, and oh, um, excellent! I love a lot. Uh, the only his earlier fights, I think. Um, but there's one he got knocked down. I can't remember who that was against, actually. Um, oh, I know which one you're talking. What's this, the dude's name? This is his fifth fight. I know that. I watched it. And I can't oh, remember. what's his name? I'll find it. Um, he's six foot six. He's a big dude. He's six yeah. foot six, southpaw, oh, yeah. yeah. and he can move, yeah. man. He watching. Oh, yeah, him, he moves a bit like Dojko. Yeah, I thought there was. For me, just the way he shows his fluidity and a bit of speed with his hands, it reminded me of just how Joseph Parker looks in the ring, but Southpaw and a bit smaller. Or Joe's a little bit smaller, but he's got that same kind of fluidity with his movement, and he looks like a real athlete. Um, you know, and he seems to have a pretty good punch. I think it's his last four fights or something. He's got first round KOs, but. You know, the opposition isn't that great, obviously, but um, he must have some power there if he's yeah. knocking guys out in the first round all the time. Um, yeah, it's an interesting fight. He had hey? a good few knockouts in the amateurs as well, man, like, and some good ones as well. I've seen one of my favorite, I can't remember who it was, but he got, caught a guy with a left hook coming in, and the dude, like, actually was out on his feet. Like, he was standing still for 10 seconds, and then he just fell down. Waiting, it's like, like Mortal Kombat, waiting for the finish him. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is and like a... When it didn't call me, was finished. <laughs> yeah. This is like a step-up fight for, um, for, uh, Zhang. Um, Kuzman's had the better opponents, eh? Definitely. Um, oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. Zhang's got some, uh, some amateur experience as well. He did lose to Anthony Joshua at the Olympics, didn't he? So, but that was early in... Um, and I believe he picked up bronze in 08 as well. He did. Um, can't the remember Beijing who he games. fought in those ones. I oh, didn't actually watch the Olympics in that one. but uh, Yeah, he's got some amateur pedigree there as well. He just hasn't faced any decent opposition just yet. Uh, I've just about found this guy that knocked him down. I'll remember the name when I see it. Juan Good. They need to feed him to Hergovic. Juan Good was the guy ah. who knocked him down. He got him right in the mouth with a with a right hand, and he sat clean on his ass. But he got up straight after that. Um, that was back in 2015. It was only his fifth professional fight, but um, this is Jili Zhang, by the way. But yes, last fight was oh last fight was a third round TKO. But then prior to that, first round stoppage, first round stoppage, first round stoppage, first round stoppage, first round stoppage. Far out. How many of those has he got? That's five in a row right there. Yeah. And six, seven, and then second round TKO. <laughs> Eight fights. He's, he's, he's cracking, eh? He's cracking, all right. Yeah. So, yeah, but who's he fighting? Well, yeah, the Who second round fighting? was Glenn Brown, <laughs> and then the first okay. round, first round ones were Peter Graham, uh, Mark Brown. Oh, he's fighting Brown brothers. Um, Curtis Harper. He stopped in the first round. Okay. Uh, Nick Guevas. Okay. He stopped in the first round. Byron Pauly, That's so bad, you know, man. Yeah, these guys. I know some they're of these guys, bad. so they're, they're good fighters, man. Like they're like they're good fringe journeymen kind of guys. Like yeah. not fringe world, obviously, but they're like consummate like journeymen who we know who can give anybody a bit of work, or they can give you some rounds if they're not walking out the ring. Yeah. But, 
Yeah, they can give rounds. They can make it tough for you. Curtis Harper being stopped in a round is a good win. It's a good win. Okay. I'll believe you on that one. I haven't seen much of Curtis Harper besides him walking out of the ring on the jug, but, but yeah. He's I, tough. Okay. Um, even Nick Guevas, uh, he's been stopped plenty of times, but it's not usually the first round he gets stopped in, so... Normally it takes people a few rounds, like two or three, to figure out Grievous, because he has that head movement and that, like, peekaboo style. Yeah. So, I'm, uh, yeah, it's probably against the grain, but I'm, I'm picking Zhang to, um, win this one on decision. I was thinking that too, eh? I was thinking, yeah, I think he's going to grab it. Mm. I'll tell you what, it'd be really impressive if he knocks out Cosmo. That'd be a statement. No one's done that, not even in the pros. I mean, in the amateurs. So, he's a tough, a tough son of a bitch. <laughs> he is he's indeed. Tough. He is indeed. Um, so, yeah, that's another one I'm that I'm... excited for that now. What was that? I'm excited for that point now. Awesome. I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shed some light on a little bit of an obscure fight. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've been kind of waiting for that one for a while because it's been intriguing me and I keep thinking about it initially I thought yeah Kuzman should win but how he looked against um, Michael Hunter how he looked was made to look slow and plodding I thought to myself well when I think about it there isn't really anybody he's fought that moves really well and is the same size or bigger than him so I think the style matchup's going to be a bit of a nightmare for Kuzman. <laughs> but we'll see. Well, you know how I picked on that, John. I said Hunter would, like, win nine rounds, ten rounds, easy money against him. Yeah. Oh, I, thought, I always thought Hunter was going to win it, but I didn't think he'd make Kuzman look so... Um, made him look really slow and plotting, eh? <laughs> he he won it easy. Yeah, he won it easy, didn't he? And did. scores. Yeah. Piece of purse. So, yeah. I will say one thing. I'm really excited now because, like, next week we've got Wilder Ortiz. And then the week after, we've obviously got um, Jelly Jean versus Guzman. Yeah. And then the week after, we have the big one, John. Like, the big one. Like, forget about AJ and Ruiz. Hunter, Hunter versus Pavekin. That's the big one. That's a damn good fight, too. Oh, man. yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was really hoping Hugovic would get a better opponent because, I, I, you know, it's Molina. And that would have just made that card massive. I would have loved to have seen a Cabiel Hugovic. That would have been a choice fight on that card. But I guess it probably would have been getting a bit too expensive for her. As it is, it sounds like the pay per views going up for that um, to cover some costs. So it is what it is. But. Um, yeah, pay-per-view gone up five quid. Yeah. But uh, Hunter versus Pavekin, I'm picking Hunter on points. A lot of people are trying to be, have been telling me, oh, Pavekin's not done yet. He should beat Hunter. It's like, how yeah, much I'm going have... for, yeah, I'm going for Hunter. I am. I, I just thought Pavekin, he'll be 40 now. You know, gas tanks getting a bit leaky. The punches won't be quite so accurate. I'm... I'm Gonna go for Hunter in that one points. Mm. And even if he can land on Hunter, Hunter's got a damn good chin, man. That boy's taking some good shots, and nothing seems to have affected him too badly. And besides that, it's gonna be pretty hard to land flush on the dude anyway, because he moves very well. And even when he does get hit, he's usually moving with the punch, or it's partially blocked or something. So I see Pavekin gassing well, out before one thing six. Pavekin can do. But yep. there's one thing Pavekin can do that I think everyone will agree on, is that dude is deadly accurate. Yeah. This is the most accurate puncher Hunter's ever fought against. Yes, yeah, con- and, 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 and in combination for me. Eh? Beautiful yeah. combos, Pavekin. Yeah, man. Yeah, well, it's definitely a competitive fight. I'm putting it at 60-40 um, in Hunter's favour, but... At 60-40, I wouldn't exactly be surprised if Pavekin yeah. does come out with a win. So, inside, well, I think the bookmakers agree with you. Yeah. 
Yeah, they have it kind of close, like 60-40, 55-45. Yeah. Yeah. It's not quite a 50-50, but it's pretty close in odds. And size-wise, they're, they're, they're quite close to each other too, which is, you know, it's going to make it interesting. Povetkin's, yeah. Povetkin's giving up a little bit less reach, obviously. Mm. But, um, yeah, similar height. And... Yeah, that's they, a good fight. They've got Hunter listed at 6'2 on Boxerick, don't they? Yep. I think he's actually 6'3". Well, I've seen him in the ring with Usyk, and Usyk is 6'3", legit. So, I mean, I think he's 6'3", to be honest. Yeah. I don't think Hunter's 6'2". Yeah, me too. And yeah, what they got Pavetkin at? 6'2". 6'2". Okay. For Pavetkin. We've got four inches in reach, uh, Hunter. Yeah. Four inches advantage. Four and a half but inches advantage. That's fine for Pavetkin. He's gotten so used to being, like, the guy who has a shorter reach. Yeah, he's, he's, like he's, he's fought big men. Well, realistically, Alexander Povetkin's really a blown-up cruiserweight, pretty much, isn't he? He's a he's a heavyweight for pretty much twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, he's he's definitely made a decent career for himself in the heavyweight division. He's well respected. He's got one of the best resumes in the in the business. Um. So he deserves every bit of respect he gets. Um, but I'm sorry, I think Michael Hunt is going to beat you, Alexander. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but good fight. Good it's going to be a good fight. Yeah, it's a good fight. Good, good way to finish the year. We got a good string of fights. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Haven't done too much research about what's going on after the seventh, but I have heard of a few cards around. Um, well. Fujimoto versus Daniel Dubois. <laughs> Sit on the twenty second or something in it. Twenty um, fourth or twenty second, yeah. Yeah, I don't don't think, think there'll it's... be too much else on that card. I wonder if the card's announced yet. Actually, yeah, have a look. Sonny Edwards versus Braithwaite is on. So okay, lower, and yeah, there was one hundred and fifteen pound fight. Tommy Fury was yapping about a fight that he wanted on that card too, wasn't he? He can piss off. <laughs> he can piss off? <laughs> he can fight KSI on the he can cut. Piss off back to, he can piss off back to Love Island. Yeah. Well, he might bring Love Island fans like um, KSI and um, Logan Paul. Brought a whole lot of fans to boxing. But, uh, nah, most off. people stop caring about Love Island every like few months. Mm. Yeah, I can't say I've ever watched it, to be honest. No, <laughs> no I haven't so, watched it. Yeah. I don't watch it either, but I just know that most people stop talking about it after a couple of months and they kind of go into obscurity and then then, and then the next group come. Yeah. Um, did you see Dylan White on the, uh, what was it, Celebrity MasterChef or something that he was on? Apparently the boy can cook. Yeah. Yeah, he was cooking up some concoctions, man. Some yeah. concoctions. I've seen a few ads, but I haven't seen any episodes. I'll see if I can find something. See how much of a good cook he I is. I was actually watching it, man. Yeah? I was watching it. Some of the food he was making was looking pretty decent. I'd have eaten it myself. <laughs> like, what's going on here? At the start of it, you could tell the guy couldn't cook, but he's got that competitive nature in him, and he starts getting better each time. And then you just see that he's really paying attention and really putting in he just put in a lot of effort like and i guess that sums dillian white up he's a workhorse isn't he he is he deserves every penny he's got he's had to work for it all his life so how's he going with the um how's he going with his um drag case is it nobody yeah. knows man yeah still we won't hear anything until it's over and at this stage it's not over so so he can't fight he's basically froze still just no, he's, he's well. No, he can fight, just not in England. Oh, okay. Uh, isn't his license still clear in England? Well, I don't know, man. But, but like, why would they be putting him or suggesting that they're putting him in America or they're putting him onto the AJ card? Like Eddie said, that they'll probably have him out in America or they'll have him on the AJ card or something in December. Yet. Why not just do it in the UK if he's clear to fight there? Because you know he's gonna sell. He's gonna sell out the O2. Mm. Doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. Well, prior to the talk of him possibly being on that 
December 7th card, there was talk about him wanting his own show before the end of the year. So that's what kind of alerted me to he's allowed to fight. It's only his WBC interim and mandatory status that's um, suspended. He's not physically suspended from fighting as far as I know. But... Well, remember, remember, we only found out that Tyson Fury was serving a ban with the British Boxing Board of Control six months into that suspended ban because <laughs> they only said that six months into that already. So, I mean, you never know. And we didn't know that his license was revoked. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of secrecy surrounding it. Um, and it leaves everybody to speculate and talk about what he's taken and how long he's been taking it for on? and all this sort of shit. It's all speculation, so don't pay any attention to anybody who's telling you it's fact. We just got to wait or hurry up and wait. <laughs> see, um, see, um, the people you know were talking about if, if whoever wins out of Ruiz and AJ possibly dropping the WBO belt, and then Usyk would fight possibly Parker, Parker for it. Um, but there were also people talking like Parker, and that was still asking Chisora to reschedule. But Chisora, the way he's talking, like, uh, oh, moved on, mate, sort of like he's looking for a fight with Usyk. What do you think of that happening? I don't think. Derek he's not, will be able to fight for the WBO title. No, nah, he's not ranked in the TNA. He's not ranked no. in their top 15 even. I think we're probably going to have to wait for the new, the next round, uh, next month of rankings from the WBO to see if he's actually in there or not. But either way, I don't think he's going to be high enough for them to validate a, him fighting for a vacant title. No freaking Yeah, way. yeah, yeah. So, you know... How's It'll be the Parker. Go? I think Tyson Fury is. He'll be tied up with Wilder and. Tied up with Wilder in February, but he's like number two or something, isn't he? Yep, yep. Um, yep. Because AJ got... is ranked number one. Uh, AJ is ranked two, I think. Three. Actually. Three. Yeah, Fury two. Oh, AJ is three. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then Parker's AJ four. AJ is three. Parker's four. And then five, I think, might be Adam Kovnaki. Uh, yep, it is. And then six, Dubois. But um, if he picks up that belt that Fujimoto's got in December, he might even jump above Parker. There's a possibility he could end up fighting Usyk for a vacant belt. I am absolutely okay, 100 million percent. Like, I know it'd be nice to see Parker Usyk, but I would love to see Daniel Dubois versus Usyk, man. That's I a damn good fight, isn't it? I'd pay, I, would, I would pay money to see Dappy Dubois step up. Fighting against an undisputed cruiserweight world champion. <laughs> it would be good. Eh? It would, I'd pay to see that definitely. It's yeah, really good. Eh? Yeah, it'd be a shameful Parker, but I'd definitely pay to watch that one too because that's a damn good fight. But um, you know, a lot of that's going to depend on what happens with Ruiz and Joshua as well. With Joshua yeah. being at number three, if he wins, he'll go up, and then Ruiz will come down. Will he just go where Joshua is? So he could be eligible to fight for a vacant title. Mm. Then we could possibly see Ruiz versus Usyk, which yeah. is all right in my book. That's... Yeah, man, yeah, it'd be a good fight. Yeah, whoever. There's a lot of fights there that like are, we're fine with these. Look, Dubois Usyk, I'm good. Right, Parker Usyk, I'm good. Ruiz Usyk, I'm good. Y'all good? Yeah, yeah. yeah man. Yeah, I'm I'd, I'd pay those. to watch any three. Yep. Yeah. Even Kel Naki Usyk, I'd still be happy with that. Oh, 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 that that that's a nice little fight, you know, because Kabnaki's <laughs> very good at pressuring. That's a nice little fight. But um, I saw Junior Farr's team were talking about possibly waiting in the wings for a title fight. If it ended up Junior Farr versus Usyk, oh, I would spit man. tax, man. I would, I would totally man. spit tax. Yeah, that, that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> That'd just be a stinker of a fight, man. Jesus. Yeah. Um. So yeah. I think if Junior's going to get Usyk a... would beat him 12 rounds to zip. He'd he beat would. Him 12 rounds to zip. He yeah. would, man. He'd He's beat already beaten him in the amateurs, too. In the World Series of Boxing, he beat Far him. Far can't deal with that movement, man. He can't deal with a mover like that. Yeah, well, Far himself said... Um, I remember a statement. Uh, someone asked him, who's the hardest fighter you've ever fought? He said, Alexander Usyk, because I can't freaking hit him. <laughs> <laughs> 
So there you go. He's so quick, man. He's so fast on his feet. Yeah. Those feet are like jet skis. They're like <laughs> jet skis, man. That's a good analogy. It's like almost like having rocket-powered ice skates, and he can move in and out of range just like that. Done. <laughs> he does get hit now and then, but um, nothing seems to affect him too much because he's never getting hit flush, or he's moving away from the punches that hits him, or partially blocked, or just grazes off him, so... Every, there's a lot of people underestimating Alexander Usyk. Ooh, he's just a blown up cruiserweight. Deontay Wilder would knock him clean the fuck out. How many times have you heard that? I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> gonna say this. I'm just gonna say this. Wilder has to knock him out because there's no way in hell he'll win around against him. Because unlike Fury, he'll he'll nick a, he'll nick all the rounds. Usyk will. He will go one, two, three, four. He will land a lot more punches. He does a lot more volume, and he's able to get in and out way better than anybody in that division. Yep, totally agree. Totally he's agree. interesting. He's ranked. He's ranked fifth with the WBC. Uh, Usyk. Yeah, he's moving. He's moving, moving up. Yeah, he's making. He's moving up. Yeah, I saw Boxy Squared did a video on the rankings yesterday. I think it was. Because the WBC a couple of weeks ago brought out their new month's rankings, and that was in conjunction with their uh, their what was some kind of comp- WBC conference that they had, where they made the decision about Tyson Fury and um, Dillian White and all the, all this sort of thing. And then two weeks later, they bring out the rankings again, uh, which was weird, and they're updated now. So. Um, somebody got put in there off the top of my head. Who was it that wasn't in there before? Uh, Oscar Rivas got moved up. Um, Good. Even though he hasn't had any fights. He got moved up to number five. I think he was down at number nine before. Yeah, WBC, is that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, everybody below five pretty much has been down a notch. Um, and Daniel Dubois is all of a sudden in the WBC rankings, uh, which he wasn't before. Um, so, you know, I can see the WBC trying to get competitive here with the WBO. They want Daniel Dubois on their books fighting their ranked fighters uh, before Daniel Dubois can possibly get a WBO shot. But... You know, whoever's going to offer him a, offer him a title shot first is probably going to get it. I can see the WBO winning this battle. <laughs> but uh, come first of yeah, January twenty twenty, it's not going to matter because I won't be talking about the WBC. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. WBC boycott. There's too much bullshit going on with them. Installing mandatories without fighting final eliminators, blocking out boxes on evidence that they don't have, uh, giving champions titles that, well, sorry, it's not a title, it's not a new championship, it's a designation, says. Yeah, so, so that, that franchise, so what does that entitle the fighter to? They don't have any mandatories. They can swap and change between weight divisions and fight whoever they want. It's all in the name of better fights, but titles don't matter. But but it also gives you the opportunity to avoid a guy who deserves a shot against you. Exactly. Well, the, the two franchise champions at present had mandatories. That they didn't want to face at this stage. So the WBC gave them the ticket to be able to duck their mandatories. Simple as that. Terrible, man. Eh? That's terrible. I mean, but, what's the point? What's the point in having a, a top? The whole point of having a top 10 for the sanctioning body was if you could fight to the number one spot, you knew you were going to get a, get a title shot. That was that, That's basically what it's for. And, and now you've got a situation where you can get to the number one spot and not get a title shot. At, yep. it, it just defeats the whole purpose of having a top 10 ranking. You know? Yeah, and well, no, it, it doesn't. That's the thing. It doesn't defeat the purpose because what they do is they give someone this designation, and 
then give someone else the world title. And then that person who has the world title pretty much fights people. And you can still become a mandatory, but the franchise champion is paying sanctioning fees. The world champion is paying sanctioning fees. If you beat a franchise champion, you don't become a WBC world champion, but you become a diamond belt holder, which can which means that you can then possibly be made a mandatory if the WBC decide to designate you as the mandatory. Oh my god! Your performance, <laughs> and then and then also the interim belt is still available. So at some stage, let's say middleweight. Right now we've got Charlo, right? He's world champion and Canelo's franchise champion. There is no diamond champion. And there is no... Um, but if somebody were to beat Canelo, Canelo would still be franchise champion. And let's say... I don't know. Let's say Andre beat him and he was made diamond champion. And then let's say someone like J-Rock moved into that division and beat a couple of guys, but he couldn't get the fight with Charlo. They could make him interim champion. So we could see a mandatory with the diamond belt. We could see an interim world champion, a world champion, and a franchise champion all ranked at the same place. Damn. Hashtag sanctioning fees galore. <laughs> oh, um, my God. Says, oh, we don't mean to confuse anybody, but I'm a little bit confused myself. Not yeah, freaking man. surprised. Oh, holy shit, man. He's not man. confused at all. He's not confused at all. Because... He's confused as to how he can explain it to you that it's not corrupt because he can't do it. <laughs> because if he tells you what it is, he's telling you what I just told you. It's just a sanctioning fee hole. Yep. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you're getting sanctioning fees for each belt. It's just yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. There are some certain fighters that I I would say that a franchise champion would make a li a little bit of sense, and I can understand why they let. Uh, Canelo make the franchise because he's worth a lot of money. He doesn't want to be told what to do. You know, he's chucked the WBC belt in the rubbish before. Um, any but changes the other thing between? Is he can move up and down. Yeah, yeah, he moves up and down. Yeah, like he's been at 160 in the last year. He's been at 160, 168, and 175. Like he went from 160 to 168 back to 160 to fight jacobs and up two divisions to fight for 175 i mean that makes sense i mean if they were to give it to someone like pacquiao just based on honor he's worth a lot of money he's an older fighter he's able to make any fights happen given him a distinction like that makes sense or canelo who's arguably gonna win fighter in a decade but Giving it to fucking Loma, who Stupid. can't go up to 140 because he's too small. I mean, the dude looked like a midget next to Luke Campbell. And Luke Campbell looks like a midget next to fucking Josh Taylor, fam. Yeah. You know, that was the other point I was going to bring up. Somebody like Manny Pacquiao definitely suits because, you know, he's been there, done that. He's a legend in the sport. And he's got a real, he's got a career besides boxing now as well. So he can't fight that often anyway. So just give him a franchise championship, but yeah, like you say, giving it to Lomachenko, that was stupid, and I, I really dislike Bob Arum for petitioning for that and killing the opportunity he would have of cementing his legacy as an undisputed fighter, because unless he beats the winner of Kome and Lopez, then goes and beats... Um, Devin Haney as well he's not going to be undisputed I would see Mauricio Solomon well, sitting there he wouldn't have just been undisputed he wouldn't have just been undisputed he would have been the first and only undisputed champion at lightweight to hold four belts there you go none of the other guys did that that's what they stopped here Yeah. that's the bullshit they stopped look at the guys who've held undisputed Roberto Duran, like this is just lightweight, but Roberto Duran, Pernell Whitaker, I mean, come on, man. That's the type of status this dude was trying to get into, and they fucked it up. I think also Bob Arum and um, Mauricio Solomon have convinced Lomachenko that even if he doesn't fight Haney, he'll still be undisputed. And, uh, you know, the fans are not going to see it like that. So I think he's been. At shafted. the end of the day, we're the ones. We're the ones who recognize the meaning of undisputed, not the sanctioning bodies or the promoters. 
where if we see that there's another champion out there, we're going to say you're not the fucking undisputed champion. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm interested to see how it's going to go, how many people are going to get in behind this this boycott idea come January 1st, and if it's going to have an impact on um, whether the WBC continue their bullshit or not. I hope they don't, because it's going to take a lot of shine off um, off their, their real world title belts, and um, it's disrespecting the history of the sport as well. So, clean it up, WBC, or we're gonna make you pay. <laughs> Got another fight here. I found you guys uh, interesting for the twentieth of December. Um, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. against Daniel Jacobs. Oh yeah, we knew that one was coming up. Um, Chavez Jr. is. Uh, getting hounded hard by Eddie Hearn. He's got to pass all his VADA tests and he's also getting UK tested as well, I think, isn't he? So, they think he's a dirty fighter. Um, what did you reckon about that one, Unrivaled, or is he gone? Oh, wait. He's gone. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, um, be a good fight. Though. I'm looking forward to it. I hope it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um... A fight that I thought would be better because I think Xavier's Jr. is going to get a hiding in that one. Um, I think a battle between Xavier's Jr. and Tim Shu, um, the two guys whose fathers fought in a legendary fight up, uh, you know, uh, Costa Shu and um, Mr. Chavez. I think that would be a more competitive fight, but I, I can see Chavez Jr. getting this fight based off pretty much his dad's name because he hasn't fought a hell of a lot of competition. Danny Jacobs has been in there with some of the best um, and he's beaten some really good fighters at the same time and proven himself. So I just think Chavez is going to get a hiding in that one. But yeah. what, do you, what do you reckon, Marla? Yeah, I, I haven't watched like a whole lot. He's, he's, he's very experienced, Chavez. I'm just bringing his record up. 51... 33 stoppages, three losses, one KO. Daniel Jacobs, Fort Alvarez, unanimous decision. I'm going through it. Rubio, Manfredo. Yeah, I think Danny Jacobs has fought the better competition. And yeah, I'm going to go for Danny Jacobs in that one. Yeah. Yep. No worries, Unrivaled. He's just in the chat saying sorry, dropped out. It's all good, man. In there for a while. Um, yeah, so we've been on for a bit anyway. Um, Tyson Fury being made mandatory, even though the fight's already signed. That was the more bullshit from the WBC I was talking about. Even Tyson Fury himself said, What's the point of making me mandatory when I'm already fighting him and this, the fight's signed and sealed? Oh, oh that's wild. It's all done, Wilder and Fury. Well. There's been the rumor that the fight has been signed and sealed, and that's coming from Tyson Fury's side. It's signed oh, and sealed for the February 20, uh, 22nd, oh, 2020. Uh, there's been no confirmation from the Wilder side, but there's been no denial either. So, yeah, you're right. it'll happen then, it sounds like. I look, I can't wait for that because the first fight was great. Eh? Oh, I really enjoyed it. Very the entertaining to watch, man. I, I was really up out of my seat one. many times in that, yeah, yelling man. at the TV. But, um, yeah, that dispute needs to be settled, and hopefully they can get it done in the second fight. Um, yeah. I'm picking Wilder to win the second fight by stoppage. I guess why they probably haven't properly announced it is because Wilder's got this fight this weekend. Um, yeah. If Wilder doesn't come through that fight, then there's no fight <laughs> February 22nd. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Fury will be chasing the winner of Joshua versus Ruiz, he reckons. I've seen him talking in articles that that's what he's going to do if yeah. Wilder loses. So, oh yeah, yeah, excellent. There's a lot of good stuff coming. Yeah, so, um, these pending fights are going to clean up the uh, landscape and be able to tell us where everybody's going to go and who they're going to try and chase for fights and whatnot. So, God, I just hope Joseph Parker can get moving next year and catch some breaks. He's got to get going. He wants three fights next year against good opposition. I reckon. 
Yeah, man. Um, fight, fight once every four months. Fight, get three fights in, and and, and good fights. Yeah. Hopefully, he can get, hopefully he can get the Chisora fight or the fight with Usyk in the first few months of next year, and then and then follow on the rest of the year with another couple of fights. Yeah, well, word is Eddie's putting on a big heavyweight card on in February sometime, so is looking to get most of his stable out then. Um, you know, my my word at the moment is, come on, Eddie. You've signed Joseph Parker to match Make something. With three fights. Yeah. You gave, got him one fight last year. Yeah, there was a spider bite issue, but you've got such a big heavyweight stable at the moment. There's plenty of options there. Um, don't keep Joseph on the shelf. Yeah, He's only going to be fighting for three more years, so get it done. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. And that's about us for today anyway. So thank you, Unrivaled Boxing Talk and News, for joining us. Also, Mala2243, great having you on as usual, mate. Sweet, man. Uh, thanks to everybody in the chat for turning up as well. Um, and to note, I might actually try and do another live commentary for the Wilder versus... Luis Ortiz card this weekend. I'm not going to commentate the whole card, but I'll commentate the main event and maybe the chief support. We'll see. So um, be around Sunday afternoon, New Zealand time, and you'll be able to join the chat with us. So thanks for joining us, and that is us for today. We'll Sorry. catch you next time. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe before you leave. And we'll see you next time. Big Boys Boxing, Marla2243 and Unrivaled Boxing Talking News. And we out.